living in China is, ex is exciting. Things change all the time. You're in the middle of, 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 of witnessing China go through like, you know, tremendous and ex exciting and important changes. And it's never boring. My name is Steve Blake. I'm American, grew up in Oklahoma, um, small, small place in the middle of the U.S. I studied Chinese in, 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 in school and in, in university and had an interest in it. And I thought maybe I'll go to China. Uh, I, 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 I found a job at a, at a magazine in the city of Yangzhou, uh, in Jiangsu province. Went there in 2005 and stayed all the way until 2022. So I was there for, uh, for uh, over 17 years. Well, I spent my whole adult life in China, my career in China. And it has really shaped uh, who I am today. I found an internship in Beijing with the Nature Conservancy. And so I moved from this, this, uh, this uh, small town of Yangzhou, a beautiful, great place, to uh, the heart of you know, China's capital. Beijing just seemed huge to me, you know. Like, wow. And, I, and you know, I came into town like this with, with a backpack full of clothes. It was, it was all my possessions, you know, and like a little bit of money. And then eventually, you know, built a, built a career and built a life there in Beijing. And I spent a lot of that time working in the environment field. So I was working with environmental organizations for 15 years uh, in Beijing, doing both like, like environmental conservation, um, you know, working with wildlife and nature reserves, um, at an organization called the Nature Conservancy, and then later on at another organization called Wild Aid, which did uh, media campaigns. China had been developing really rapidly. Everything was kind of developing just like the economy, like, like the environment. Around that time, 2005, 6, 7, 8, when I got started doing that, um, environmental issues were really heating up in China. Public awareness changed significantly, like, like night and day from the beginning. And then also the physical environment changed as well. There was a lot of other progress on, on you know, protecting wildlife and, and other conservation issues. Water pollution was another big one like, that, that improved significantly. There's so. But just like it, from day-to-day -day life living in Beijing, that's the, the clearest thing you can see is the, is the air pollution, and it improved drastically. You really got a sense of like, the amount that people cared about these issues. Like, people were willing to donate their time, donate their resources um, to really get this message out there. I don't have a single regret from, from my time in China and like, the work that I did. I got, to, I got to spend a lot of time in really beautiful places in China, like going to, uh, from, you know, like the like the grasslands in Inner Mongolia and in, in Northeast China, to seeing like tiger habitat in um, on the border of North Korea and Russia, in, in, in Jilin province, and like and like getting to see like where tigers were like scratching on trees, you could like see that. I feel like I've always been in positions where where I'm kind of you know in like a bridge like position between the two between the two cultures, and uh, I hope you know just at least from daily personal interactions and what I can do you know to help to help build understanding between the, 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 the people of both countries because that's what's, what's, what's really needed the most.